Greetings from Camino Lutheran Church on this Christ the King Sunday. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the cries of all who cry out, and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our true life, to serve you is freedom and to know you is unending joy. We worship you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Jeremiah 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. This is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the land where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up the shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, or shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Colossians 1. May you be made strong in all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is therefore all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Christ the King Sunday comes from the 23rd chapter of Luke, verses 33 to 43. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, saying, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that they are pleasing to you and faithful to your gospel. These things I pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are on Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday in the year's lectionary cycle. We work off of a three-year cycle, if you're not aware of that, an A, a B, and a C. And so we just finished up year C today, which has a focus on Luke's Gospel and some smatterings of John's Gospel. Next week, as the season of Advent starts, we'll be focused on Matthew's Gospel, and then, of course, Cycle B focuses us on Mark's gospel. It, it seeks to give us a kind of an overview of the whole of the scriptures from the gospel perspective, as well as the other New Testament readings and the readings from the Hebrew scriptures. So it's a day called Christ the King. Certainly, we would expect a sense of celebration. It seems to fit that it would be the last day. Looking back on all the things that Jesus did, perhaps we would expect a text that shows Jesus finally taking his rightful spot. Uh, as the leader within the community, uh, within the temple, that building that was adorned in such beauty that the disciples were captured by last week, perhaps sitting there in full regal wear. In fact, look at our bulletin cover. It's got the crown. Christ the King, Sonny, it's got the crown. It's fitting. It's gold. In fact, maybe there's a couple jewels in there. Maybe that's the image that we expected for that day and all the people sitting there praising him. 
Instead, we get something very different. Instead, we get a gospel reading that takes us to Jesus' crucifixion. That doesn't seem right. Why jump and bump to that and not only start there, but end there without any story of the Easter resurrection? It gives us a picture and we see how the people are responding to Jesus, this king among them. The religious leaders, they look and they mock Jesus and they scoff at him. And they say, he saved others. Why can't he save himself? And the soldiers, they also mocked him. And they said, if you are the king of the Jews, why don't you save yourself? And of course, you read on further and you see of the two criminals, one of them's like, yeah, if you're the Messiah, the Son of God, save yourself and save us also. It seems harsh and yet it is a picture of who Jesus is as king. In fact, maybe you didn't catch it like I didn't when Sarah Lynn first sent the bulletin cover. But do you notice underneath the words, there's a different kind of crown. It's a crown of thorns. A crown of thorns that, yes, was put on Jesus for his crucifixion to mock him and his kingship. You see, to everybody there and looking on, and even for us today, it just seems a foolish way for a king to go. And yet we look at the whole of the life of Jesus, which Christ the King Sunday gives us pause to do, and we look back and it's this type of kingship that we see over and over again. One that is difficult, one that often bears and brings about suffering for Jesus and those closest to him, but brings life and renewal to those whom Jesus met along the way. We had Zacchaeus, the tax collector recently. All the society says, stay away from those sinners. They are horrible and indeed they were. But what does Jesus do instead? His kingship, one with thorns, doesn't go with what all everybody else says should be so that they maintain their safety, their security, but he seeks after the lost, the ones that are broken, the ones that are being put down, and he dines with Zacchaeus in his house, has a meal with him, spends the day with him, and Zacchaeus is transformed. We heard that just a couple weeks ago. Or what about the little kids? Some of you might have grown up in that period or said it yourself. Kids are meant to be seen and not heard and pushed off into the other rooms. As those little kids, these ones without a voice and place, come running up and the leaders, the disciples, keep them away, they're annoying. And Jesus says, no, let the children come for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. I wonder how popular that was amongst the crowd when they saw it. Did their hearts finally get touched? Perhaps the disciples did. I wish maybe we had a little writing to see how they reacted to that. Oh, and then there's the religious leaders, like Nicodemus. They come in the night for fear, probably, of what others would think if he's in the cahoots and spending time with Jesus. He wants to talk to him. He's curious. He wonders. And Jesus tells him about being reborn. And Nicodemus, what? How can you go back in a second time and be? That doesn't make sense. And Jesus starts to open up what it means to be reborn in Christ, reborn into God's kingdom. A transformation begins to happen, and we will see Zacchaeus, or excuse me, Nicodemus present later in the story of Jesus and his life and his death and his resurrection. We see the woman at the well seven times married, all the pieces that go with that, not even supposed to be near her, alone with her, and in the midst of his rest at the well. He talks to her. He tells her all about herself and who she is. Things that maybe she's not proud of, and yet he meets her there with compassion, with caring, with value in who she is. And he gives her the water of life that they talk about. And she's transformed and she goes and tells everybody who will listen to the story. He bucks the trends of the law as people understood it healing on the Sabbath, bringing life and wholeness when nothing was supposed to be done. But he brings light to what the heart of that commandment was all about versus the legalism of it. It's not always easy, but that was his kingship, one of a willingness 
to meet the lowliest in society, to challenge those on the top who had forgotten their responsibilities to the whole community. But it's hard. It's hard work to do. In fact, when he's arrested, what would we expect? His disciples are there. When he's arrested, we would want some type of battle to come up out of that. Yes, let's get back our spot. You've heard me talk about this story so much. Lops off, one of his disciples lops off the ear of one of the soldiers. Jesus says, no, no, no. How's this perfect moment? Use your power. Overtake these people. Show them who's king, who's really king, who's boss, who can sit on that throne. Instead, he says, no, that is not who we are. That is not who I am. That is not what God's kingdom in this world is all about. Put your sword away. And here, here in our text, he sits on the cross. Literally, having been beaten, having his clothes stripped, being mocked, being given wine, mixed up wine, sour wine from the soldiers, even there perhaps mocking him. He looks out, Father, forgive him, for they know not what they do. That's Jesus' kingship. Is that how we think of kings? Is that a king? If we stop and pause and get deep down and think about it, that we look for, that we want to be our king? So many in the commentaries that I was reading suggest that we often look for somebody who's simply going to bring security and we'll even elect people to lead us or allow people to lead us that don't quite fit our values but they have this one piece of security or will bring us extra wealth or give us some bling that's a short-term bling that we think is going to sustain us but never does. The power of Jesus' kingship, love, mercy, forgiveness, that is stuff that lasts a lifetime into the fullness of eternity. But that's hard work. The kingdom of God is among you, Jesus says in the scriptures. This isn't just an event. This isn't just a life. It isn't just a word. It isn't just a reality that's in the heavenly futures. But the kingdom of God is among them now. And Jesus even says the kingdom of God is within you. He's passed along the work to the disciples and he's passed along the kingdom work to all who follow him back then and today. But it's hard work. I was going to share this in the announcements to keep you up to date, but it seems fitting with today's sermon. And I actually had talked about OPOP about a month and a half ago, not knowing this was coming. So many of you are aware we're part of the One Parish, One Prisoner program. We've been in relationship with our releasing friend, Kelly, uh, for, oh, about six, well, over a year now, but for the last six months, he's been out. Uh, but because of some things within the system, the way they're set up, quite frankly, learning a lot about that, some things I get, some things I don't, they just seem a little harsh on some levels, or I just don't understand what's, what's going on, and, and that's okay. So there's some things within the system while he's been out that have kept him from being able to work um, in certain places, which has kept him from being able to come to, to church. And I'm left wondering would things have been different if he could have been at church, which he said he wanted to um, each, each week. Um, so lots of little things that have come up that, that just don't make sense to me that could have played into this. But as well, the reality is what could have played into this is, you know, each of us have as we've been looking at in adult ed, we have our moments of brokenness and places in our past that have wounded us in a way, that have set us on a particular way of thinking that isn't always the healthiest. And so the reality is that I think some of that is playing out for Kelly in his, in his life. But that's a reality for all of us, not just him. And so we found out just recently that he had cut his... Uh, ankle monitor off and had taken off. Uh, we've tried to contact him, but we have not heard back. And we are deeply saddened by this. And there's a part that says, well, we gave him the shot because we did. We did a ton. And in fact, maybe we're culpable somewhere in this. Maybe we did a little too much. Maybe we enabled in some ways. I don't know. I'm still thinking and wrestling with that. 
But either way, it doesn't matter. He's still our friend. As difficult as that is, and as easy it would be to say, well, we gave him the shot, he didn't take it, we're done. No, this is a a commitment for a lifetime that we made in the beginning. That no matter what, we're his friend. We have his back. But having his back sometimes means you made a choice. That's your choice. You make that choice, you do it, you deal with the repercussions. So we don't know what's going to happen. If he gets arrested and is put back in jail, we'll write. We will continue to pray here. He's still our friend. It's hard to do. So many people put so much in. But that's the commitment we made. And that, I think, in some small way, is bearing out the kingship, the Christ the King Sunday, is all about. It's not saying it's all okay. No, it's not that. It's saying we're going to walk with you in this brokenness. In fact, one last story. Jesus meets the rich young ruler. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, you know the commandments Jesus says. Names them, follow them. I've done all those. (laughs) Texas, Jesus loved him and smiled. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Yeah, who of us has kept all of them? He says, okay, you lack one thing. Go and get rid of all you have and come and follow me. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He said he'd done them all, but he hadn't. He was possessed by his possessions, and he turned and walked away slowly. Jesus' words were simple. See how difficult it is for the wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. That wasn't some slam that they're never allowed into the kingdom, because the reality is, when I look at the whole of the story of Jesus and this king, if that rich young ruler ever did come back or win, Jesus would meet him there, and they would continue the conversation. So it is Christ the King Sunday. What kind of kings and leaders do we want? And why? How does Jesus in this foolishness of the cross seem to fit what we want in our lives? And how does it lead how we live out our faith? May the Spirit give us the strength and power to always trust the good news of the gospel in Jesus giving up the fullness of himself for not a few, but for all. May we have such courage to offer our compassion and mercy and love and forgiveness for all. Amen.
United with the saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. We pray for your church, O oh God, embolden denominations and faith-based organizations in creative and collaborative ministries and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth, protect waterways from pollution and animal habitats from destruction. Guide us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, instill in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace. Support the work of international collaborations that seek the goals of health and joy for all people. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for all who are undermined or oppressed. Amplify the voices of the unheard and break open stubborn systems of injustice. Bring about your righteousness and fill us all with your redeeming light. Be with those that are struggling with illness of any kind. We especially pray for John, for Zaid, for Irma, for Kevin, for Jeanette, for Ruth, for Karen, for Kelly, for Kathy and Ed. Be with Dave Perkins and his family as they grieve the death of Dave's brother. Hold them in your arms of mercy and the promise of the resurrection through Christ. We also pray for the Stanwood Camino Food Bank and all they do to help our community. We also remember those named in our bulletin, on our prayer chain, and those we name aloud are in the silence of our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for this assembly, those in person and those online. Guide our pastors, ministry teams, and council members in discernment, and nurture new leaders with fresh ideas. Give this congregation a spirit of discipleship and service. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things. You have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with your word and sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
creates all things and makes them good, who makes us alive in Christ Jesus and who breathes in us the spirit of hope. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God. Greetings for our announcements from the deck. It's nice enough to be out here today. It's cold, but it's, it's a beautiful, clear, sunny day. So hope you have had a great week. Uh, several announcements, so I'll try to get to those quickly here for you. Spending guideline vote is today, if you're watching this on Sunday morning, right after the first, right after our service, so about 11, 11 o'clock to 11.15. Um, have to be in person to come and, and put your vote in. And of course, we have a, uh, it's like a southwest plane flying overhead, but hopefully it's not too loud here. Um, so that's today. And then wanted to let you know, December 4th, we're going to have our council elections, which means we'll have the slate of council members for re-election uh, for 2023 and those who are brand new. So it's important we have as many folks come out as possible for that. All that is meeting is focused on is letting you know here's who the who is up for election for that year, and then you vote yes or no. So there's not other business that happens at this meeting. It's just that. So it will be very short, and it will happen right after the right after the service as well. So about 11:15 or so. So come on out and um, be there for that as we elect our new council members and and pray for them in the new year. Uh, gathering place December 1st is gathering place. If you can help out with that, please let Susan Hendrickson know that you can come help out with that, whether it's being there or help out with, with uh, some of the costs that help with the food that we put together, please let her know that. But Evelyn's of the month, speaking of food, is the food bank. So if you'd like to give a little extra to the food bank this month, you can do that online, or if you send in a check, just in the memo line, write BOM for Benevolence of the Month Food Bank, and we'll make sure that gets there. Looking for some candles. And uh, what I'm talking about is, is not the like handheld straight up. Those little pillars are about three inches around. Sometimes they're three inches high. Some are 10 inches high. Eight. Looking for a bunch of those this Advent season and Christmas season. So if you have some that you that are battery operated that you or or that's fine if they're not um, that you'd like to let me use from about the we need them by the 15th of December, but that I could hang on to them from about the 15th of December through Christmas. Um, that would be fantastic. But if you bring it by the office, please put tape or something on the bottom with your name so we know exactly who, who it belongs to and we make sure it gets back to you on that. Next piece, Josephine. Josephine Caring Community, this year for the gifts, they are doing it differently. They have three things that they're looking for and see how good my memory is. It's a throw pillow, a neck pillow, and grippy socks. Uh, if you have not let the office know that you'd like to help out with that and so what they're asking is that you get all three Because they've talked to the residents and that's what they want most so rather than in the past It was all kinds of different things. That's what you know you get So please call the office if you want to help out with that and haven't yet um, We've got about 25 tags I believe that we've got that we want to get out to folks to be able to make those purchases to help out the residents over at Josephine last but not least is Advent is just about here. Uh, this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving and then on Sunday the 27th is the first Sunday in Advent. Uh, so we'll be lighting the Advent wreath and getting started with the um, Advent season. Our first Advent midweek service however won't be that first Wednesday after the 27th but on the 7th of December. We'll have three midweeks this year on 7, 14, and 21. 7 and 14 will be holding evening prayer, which we know so many of you enjoy and have asked again, are we doing it? Yes, we're gonna do it. And we are gonna have soup suppers this year. So that'll start at six o'clock for soup suppers and then seven o'clock for the service. And on the 21st, the longest day of the year, we're gonna have the longest night service. While Advent and Christmas is a time of great joy and celebration for a lot of people, and especially as we celebrate Christ's birth, it can also be one of the most difficult periods of the year for people who have experienced a loss. Depression levels are up with the, those longer, uh, longer times of, of darkness. Suicide rates are up. And so it's a longest night service. And it's, it will be at the same time. We'll have soup supper at 6 with the service at 7. It's a service in which um, you get 
that those pieces are named, those sorrows and losses are named within the service, but as well the promise of Christ the light being with us. It's something we say each week in the whole evening prayer. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. So I hope you can come out, if not just for yourself, for the others in the community that could use the fellow presence of other believers. I was reminded of a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, Life Together. The physical presence of an, a fellow Christian is a source of incomparable joy. So let's be that for one another this year. Last but not least on, on Advent, we will have daily devotionals for you. So if you swing by the office, um, you can you can pick those up. Try to get those out there next week, actually. Right, let's say by Wednesday of Thanksgiving week. I'll try and get those out there. Um, so just contact the office to double check that they're out. Um, if not, they'll for sure be there on Sunday. So, okay, those that's a lot of announcements, and those are all. So God's peace and blessings. Hope you have a great week.